Hello, everyone. I'm so, so happy to be here and uh, being invited to this really awesome conference. Uh, first time at Berlin Buzzwords, so I'm really humbled. And also, actually, the first time in Berlin. So uh, really cool city. Yeah. So I hope that you've had really nice time so far in the conference. Yes, yes, it's allowed to nod if you want to nod. Uh, if you don't want to nod, it's also allowed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so uh, I'm really excited to give you this talk. And, uh, uh, you know, this is a, like a funny story. And uh, so how many of you came here to this talk to learn how to, like, automate Tinder so that you can meet a lot of people? Raise your hands. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for, thank you, for uh, you know, to, uh, daring to raise your hand. I really, I really, really, really respect that. And uh, yes, so my, myself as well. <laughs> yeah, all right. So yeah, so basically, um, you know, I'm a developer, right? And, you know, developers are curious people, you know? We're like, we're an interesting, you know, type of, peop type of people, basically. We're curious, we like to investigate, we like to break things, at least I like to break things. Uh, maybe we don't mean it, but it happens, and we like to just, you know, to find out new things, right? So, and you know, you, you know, we ha we are, we're living in this API age, right? Where pretty much every service out there has an open API, right? And Tinder actually has an open API, and that's quite interesting. Um, but just like a, kind of like a. Uh, discretion, you know, before I do this talk, is that I'm not promoting, you know, uh, automating the Tinder service because it's not allowed. You know, it's actually not allowed. <laughs> so Tinder is, has very strict rules. They have terms of use, uh, which uh, states what you can do uh, when you use their service and what you cannot do. Uh, and uh, if we try to automate their service, we are not using their app, and then they get really angry, right? <laughs> So, um, so this is like an experience-based talk. I'm going to tell you what happened, basically, uh, this year uh, for me when I tried to... I was very curious, and I did some things, and then some stuff happened, and then some drama happened, and then, you know, the whole thing. So I hope that I can kind of, uh, you know, uh, tell others, tell other developers and other people out there that, uh, you, know, you, you know, this is how it is if you want to work with Tinder, with Tinder API, basically, all right? So that's why you see this is a kind of a like a sarcastic title, right? <laughs> so yeah. All right. So I'm Sira Sali. I'm a solution architect. I work at a consultants company called Making Waves uh, in Norway. So I live and work in Norway. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Azure MVP. I don't work at Microsoft, but uh, I am uh, like recognized for. Uh, using their tech, basically. So, so I'm a Microsoft fanboy, basically. That's that's the thing. All right. So, so today I'm gonna talk to you about a Tinder story, but it's not that kind of story. <laughs> it's a different kind of story, right? Okay. Uh, so, how many of you uh, use Tinder or are familiar is familiar with Tinder? And don't be shy. You know, it's you know it's normal. It's just a social app, right? Okay, so about 50 people, 60 people in the room. Uh, so, you know, this whole story, it started at this place here that you see on the, on the slide. And this is a local pub in Oslo. Uh, it's called uh, the Oslo Mechanical, uh, like Oslo Mechanical, uh, what do you call it, factory. <laughs> That's the name of the pub. That's because it was a factory back in the old days. And then they, you know, eventually they shut down the factory and then it became a pub. And it's a famous pub in Oslo. Uh, and I was there uh, with a couple of my friends, a couple of my developer friends, uh, back in December 2018. And we were having some, some beer, and we were just talking, you know? And we were talking about this Tinder thing, right? Uh, so, you know, um, I'm going to explain what Tinder is all about for those that don't use the app. Uh, but, um, you know, you, when you use Tinder, you get this, you know, suggestions of people, you get pictures of people, right, in the app, and then you have to swipe right for saying yes, that you like the person, and then swipe left if you say no, you don't like the person. And if two people swipe uh, right, uh, that they like each other, they will get a match, and then they can start chatting. Uh, so we were talking and thinking, and then, like, you know, why do we waste our time doing these swipes? How about we just get instant matches? 
right? So, so this is this is like if you use the app a long time, you will get you know really you know uh, maybe you'll get frustrated like that. I, I guess we got frustrated, you know. <laughs> so, so we thought you know let's get instant matches and then we can just uh, meet people, you know. Uh, so here's here's you can see this is how it works. So basically, when you get the match and then then you can get you know you can send a message or you can just keep swiping, you know, uh, like uh, to see others. So. So a couple of beers, and then you know, developers. You know, we get a little drunk. We get very creative suddenly, and then you know, we're thinking, okay, how about just auto swipe right, right? So if you just if you just swipe right all the time, if you just like everybody, statistically you'll get a match, right? <laughs> it's simple mathematics. So we do that, and then uh, we don't need to do the swiping ourselves anymore. Uh, and you know, and then it just takes off from there. You know, we can we can uh, write this thing. We can distribute it in a in a cloud. We can you know we can use the cloud, and then we have a distributed data center doing swipes for us, and we don't need to do anything. We just sit there, and then get the, the matches, and then we can talk to the people. So it's it's really interesting uh, interesting uh, you know problem to solve. So. A couple of beers at that local pub in Oslo, and then you know I went home, and then I started coding because I was bored, and that's what I do when I when I'm very very bored and I'm a bit drunk. <laughs> so then so then so then uh, actually I did this, it, I did it, and it worked. So this is a screenshot showing you uh, showing you the scripts that I wrote basically that talks to the Tinder API and then just does the swiping. It does the you know like swiping right all the time, and it's doing that uh, very, very frequently. Uh, I believe this, it's doing this like, you know, 40 times a second or something. <laughs> so it's very fast. <laughs> so yeah, so as you can see, I had to, of course, I had to censor the, uh, the names of the people because this is, this is just, you know, the console uh, showing you what the code is doing, basically. So, so I, just, I just censored all the names of the people here uh, to, you know, to, to protect their privacy. Uh, but in any case, you get only the first name, in any case, you know, with Tinder. So Tinder, you know, also works very hard to protect the privacy of people. So, and you, as you can see, you know, I, I got all, like, every data I wanted, I got it from the API. Uh, even I got some information that actually isn't in the app, but uh, after some conversations with Tinder, they assured me that, you know, this data is, uh, you know, it's not. Uh, so one of the things is that I, I got actually the birth date of people, right, from the from the uh, from the Tinder service, from the API, and that thing that you don't get that in the app, and this is, you know, this potentially this is a major uh, breach of data protection, you know, protect, protection laws. But Tinder told me that the actually the birth dates are fake. Right? <laughs> uh, they said to me that uh, only the year is uh, is uh, is correct. The year is correct, but the rest of the you know of the of the date time field is faked out. And I believe them. I, I completely believe them because uh, because I noticed that uh, I was getting matches, and then and then I got I was you know the birth date of people was very close to each other. You know, so when I got a match in January, for example, uh, I saw that. Uh, the girls they had like their birthday uh, like uh, very close to each other, so and sometimes it got like matches the same day, so everyone had the same like birthday on the same day, and I was like, what? Really? Is that true? Uh, I'm like, oh, really? That's a very you know coincidence in that case. But then Tinder said that you know this is just fake. So okay, so we believe them. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so you got a lot of data to work to play around with, right? From the API, which I found really, really cool. As you can see in the slide here, you'll see that you know, also the location is printed out, right? So Tinder works so that they use the location that you have on your phone, right, on your GPS, and and so you don't need to think about uh, the location, like you know, uh, storing the location locally anywhere because the uh, Tinder tracks your phone. They have your GPS, they have your location, and it's saved at their service. So that means you can create apps, you can do whatever you want, and get your location from Tinder based on your phone, right? Right. So, so basically, this script of mine, if it's, it's running, let's say it's just running in the cloud, and then I, I travel to Germany, then when I, when I enter Germany, it's going to swipe right on all everyone, <laughs> like all the women in Germany. And then I go to, to Paris, it's going to swipe right on all the 
on the, all the women in, in Paris, right? I don't need to do anything about the location. It just works magically, right? So if you if like jumping around in Europe is just swiping all the time. But again, this is not this is not legal. <laughs> what I'm doing here, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, so, but you know, so you get the idea here. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Actually, actually, a friend of mine when I did this, a friend of mine said, you know, you should create a heat map. That would be really awesome. <laughs> then you can see like. You know, where's the most matches and stuff? Like, more visualized, yeah. Interesting, yeah. OK, so, so I, I wrote this thing, the script, and then I, uh, you know, I deployed it to Azure, because I'm a, like an Azure freak, you know? I work with Microsoft stuff. So I put it in Azure, and then uh, it was distributed, you know? Uh, and then suddenly, you know, it started working. So I was getting matches, like a lot of matches, without doing anything. Uh, so pretty interesting. So the hypothesis worked out, right? Uh, those crazy developer guys at at the pub actually, you know, we, we were right about it. <laughs> we could, it actually proved the point. So statistically, you'll get a lot of matches without having to do anything if you just swipe right on everyone. But then, of course, if you you know if you get a match with someone that you maybe you don't you don't you know you're not attracted to that person, then you don't need to you don't need to worry about that. You'll just not talk to the person. You know, it's a naive uh, thing, naive approach here going on. OK. Uh, and then, you know, I, of course, uh, you know, when, you are, when you are writing code, uh, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop at a, you know, at, 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 a play, at a stage. You always have to do some more and more and more, you know? Uh, have you experienced this, you know, this phenomena? Like when we're building something, we just want to extend it, extend it with more stuff, with more cool stuff, with more, you know? So then I set up, you know, I set up like email notifications. Uh, from Azure, so that so that basically every time I get a match, I get an email, and then you know in the email I get all everything, the pictures as well, all of the stuff directly to my inbox. You know, uh, of course, um, uh, of course there is notifications in the Tinder app, uh, but uh, and this is completely my opinion uh, and my experience. Uh, it, it, it doesn't work for me. The notifications, it's not working. I don't know why. It's buggy or whatever, like the Tinder app. But uh, this thing here, that this actually worked better. <laughs> and it wasn't a lot of code either. It's like, very simple. And uh, in addition, uh, you can, since you're getting all the data from the API, you can even make notifications you know, even better so that you can send the pictures, for example, directly to your inbox. You, you, don't, you don't have that today in the Tinder app. Tinder app today, you'll just you know, you'll get an email saying that, oh, you got a match. You know, click here to, to talk to the person. So they direct you to their app, basically. Uh, but uh, but here you can you know you can mix and tricks uh, as you want, <laughs> but again it's not allowed. <laughs> so then so then uh, so I open the email I get the pictures right, and then the, as you can see there you have like the age, and all and you know number of photos stuff like that you, know, you can play around it's just data open data so, okay so I did all that it was fun you know you know and you know lots of fun, and then this happens. So Tinder went down, actually. Uh, so I was writing code and you know, working with the script, and then suddenly the service was down. And uh, I was getting like 503, and uh, you know, what the heck is going on? Uh, I, like, I never experienced something like, you know, uh, it said, like, you know, backend server is at, is at capacity. That was the error from Tinder. Uh, of course, uh, you know, developers are paranoid people as well. We're paranoid, so I was like in full panic, ooh, did I, did I break Tinder, you know? Of course, we love drama, uh, so I thought that, you know, I broke Tinder and, you know, and all this. Uh, <laughs> but of course, I mean, it's a very low probability that, you know, you have a script, because my script was running for like eight days consecutively in the cloud, and uh, it was just doing like lots of likes, you know, like as I mentioned to you, like 40 likes a second or something. And it was running for eight days. You know, I didn't. I didn't do. It wasn't a DDoS attack here. You know, I wasn't doing that to break Tinder. But uh, and it, I would be very surprised if that very small script took down their service. I mean, Tinder has like 50 million uh, users around the world, and they have 10 million active users. So yeah, pretty sure this was a coincidence, a pure coincidence. But it was interesting, nonetheless, because you know, as you can see, it happened. Uh, here's the time. And also, there is also the day, you know, it was the 8th of January this year. Uh, and it was, it was like full chaos in social media. So as you can see here, 
people are like panicking, you know, like oh, I, I, I met my future partner, you know, and all this, and then you know, and then Tinder went down and they lost everything, and so people were very sad about this, and uh, you know, uh, and stuff, yeah. Okay, so here's a screenshot showing you, you know, for, for, for the tech ones, techie ones in the room, I know that there's a lot of you in the room. Uh, here's a screenshot showing you what, what I saw while debugging my application on the same day that this happened. And this is the code, basically. So as you can see here, I've marked out the uh, date time uh, just as like a, a proof that this happened at the same time that I was working with my code. And, you know, the service, uh, service unavailable, backend servers at capacity. Pretty interesting. All right. Um, so as I mentioned to you, the API is open, but there is no, Tinder doesn't want developers to do this stuff, you know, like what I did. Uh, so they don't have like any documentation on their API. Um, so, so like we're not supposed to work with the API basically. Uh, so people are creative around the world. So what, what, what uh, one, one person actually did, he's a developer as well, he made a GitHub repository uh, showing the, he made a documentation basically for, for the API. So, so he was just looking at the traffic and seeing how the, how the API works, and he wrote a, a, like an unofficial documentation. And that was the documentation that I used. Now, this documentation is out on GitHub, it's fully public and open. Um, so he probably shouldn't have done that because, you know, again, Tinder doesn't want people to, to do this. But anyway, I, um, at that time, I was really into this stuff. So what I did is I, I, I made a pull request to the developer and I told him, you know, I actually got this 503 error uh, and this wasn't in the documentation, so he had never experienced it before. So I just told him this happened and then so we got the pull request approved. Now, this was when it was like happy times and rainbows. That was before I contacted Tinder. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, OK. So all this stuff, you know, all, this exper all these experiences, they uh, led to this, you know, to the creation of a white hat hacker hub in Oslo uh, that, I, that, I, that I basically I founded. And it was really interesting because how many of you are like uh, familiar with hacking, you know, like hacking and stuff? And don't, don't be shy about it, you know, don't be shy about it. How many of you? Raise your hands. Yeah, a couple of people, yeah. Um, so, you know, you know, this concept of black hat versus white hat, you know? So basically, it's a white hat hacker hub, which basically means is that we want to hack systems in order to improve the security, right? So there's nothing wrong about that. Uh, we make an agreement with the client or the third party that we want to hack, and we tell them that, you know, we're going to hack your system, but under your approval in order to improve your security. That was the concept behind the Hacker Hub. So, uh, so it's totally fine to do, to do white hat hacking. There's no like, issue with that. So, so I started this group and then gathered some people, smart people, you know, like all of you, uh, in a room, and then you know we were thinking, you know, how can we improve this script even better? You know, like even you know how, like how could we even do auto logging in, right? Because we are logging into Tinder through Facebook, right? We're using the OAuth protocol with OpenID, oh, OpenID Connect. So, <clears throat> so basically, you have this OAuth URL here, which is this one basically. By the way, this doesn't work anymore. So obviously, Tinder and Facebook fixed this thing. <laughs> to make it harder to do this stuff. But uh, this link here, uh, when it was working, uh, if, you click on, if you clicked on this link, now as you can see on the top, this is a fully genuine link. You know? It's a Facebook link. And uh, it's to authorize a third party app. So when you click on this link, uh, if you have Facebook, you get directed to Facebook, you log into Facebook, and then you get a, a screen up uh, with uh, like a Tinder, Tinder asking you to authorize Tinder, right? You've probably seen this before, authorizing third-party applications, right? So you get the screen up, and then if you open up the browser, I should have had a screenshot here. Um, you know, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, actually, it's too bad, because now I can't do this anymore. I need to find a new link. <laughs> but when you click on it, uh, you get this, uh, you know, this tab up with Tinder asking you to get access. And then, and let's say if you're using uh, Chrome, Google Chrome, if you open up the developer tools, you go to network, and then you just look at the traffic, and if you click OK on the tab, 
uh, you'll see that you'll get a token. You know, you'll, get, you'll authorize Tinder, you'll get a token back, and that token is like the access to the kingdom, basically. You can use this token to, to log into Tinder, right, from your own account. You don't need password anymore, you don't need anything of this stuff anymore. Uh, now, the token has an expiration date, you know. How many of you are familiar with JWT tokens, you know? Yeah, JSON Web Tokens, a lot of people, yeah. They have an expiration date, right? So how can we automate this? Th you know, that was the, you know, the challenge back then. How can we uh, get new tokens automatically, basically, after expiration date? And basically automating this whole clicking process, where you have to click the link, you know, we want to make it uh, programmable, you know, like with code. Uh, and of course, the group, uh, the group that I gathered, they're really super smart, so they actually found a way to do it. <laughs> so basically, um, Basically, we, uh, we, wrote, we made it so that the code would go to the web browser, open up a web browser, and then click on OK, basically doing those human operations through the code. That's what we did. And it worked. Uh, we got, uh, like, uh, we, because you probably have, you know, um, you know MFA, multi-factor authentication, where, where, where you have to use your phone in order to log into Facebook, for example, right, as a double security measure. So we, we managed to by, bypass MFA so that you actually uh, you get a, you get like an OK here in the phone. You click OK, then it's then it like it, it works. So this this little code actually bypasses MFA. So we did that, and then suddenly we had auto login in place. That was really really awesome. Then I got it out on Azure, and then my my Facebook account was banned, of course. <laughs> So Facebook actually locked my account. And they said, uh, as you can see on the screen here, they said that uh, you know, your account is temporarily locked because um, uh, we, see that, uh, we see that you are in two places at once, which is not physically possible. Uh, because my, like the code, as I mentioned to you, it's running in Azure, so it's distributed. So suddenly, it was logging in from Amsterdam. And then I am in Oslo, and I'm, I'm using Facebook on a regular basis. And then there's a login from Amsterdam. So Facebook is like, whoa, what's going on here? Uh, we think someone hacked your account. So we're locking your account. And you have to change your password. And then I'm like, you know, I don't want to change my password. But then they said, what? You have to change your password. You don't have a choice. This, we're forcing you to do this. So I said, OK, fine. So I changed my password. And that's unfortunately where like, you know, everything ended. Because once you change your password, you can't really automate stuff. You know? It's, you know, it's going to be really tough. Um, but of course, where there is a will, there is a, you know, a chance to do stuff. <laughs> so basically, let's say if you are running the data centers um, in the same country where you are using the service, right? then you'll probably bypass the security measures of Facebook. So um, if I'm running the, uh, the code in an Azure data center in Norway, for example, then they wouldn't detect any, any issue. They wouldn't know, right? But of course, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I didn't test that out. And uh, I'm not going to test that out, because uh, again, this is not allowed. <laughs> yeah, but you can, it's possible. OK, so um, all right, so I sent an email to Tinder, uh, because after doing this stuff, all the stuff that I did, and then I started you know, uh, sending abstracts, you know, talks around the world to conferences just to, ex to talk about this stuff that happened to me. But then a lot of tech people that I know back in Oslo, they told me that you, know, you, should, you shouldn't do this. You should do the ethical thing and contact Tinder. You shouldn't you know, do, you know, do what you did without telling Tinder what you did and then go talk about it. You know? So I thought about it, and I said, you know, OK, fine. OK, you're right. I'm going to do that. I'll contact them. So I contacted them, and then they said, you know, hello. You know, like, thank you for reaching out, and you know, and then, but then they said you have to stop immediately. They were pretty annoyed of what I did. Uh, so um, automation is not allowed. So I, you know, no problem. We stopped that. But then I also told them, you know, your service went down. You know, it affected millions of people. So yeah, and uh, I, I, I don't think it was me. I, I hardly, hardly doubt that it was me. But you know, what? Do you have any comment about that? And then they're like, no, we, we neither confirm or deny your assumption here of what happened. Yeah, but the service didn't work for millions of people for two hours. You know? But no, they're like, no, 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 no comment. <laughs> uh, and also, um, you know, the funny thing with Tinder is that you get like a finite amount of likes per day. 
And if you pay for Tinder, so if you pay for the service, you can get uh, unlimited amount of likes. You can like people you know, forever. And uh, you can do also super likes, but super likes you have to pay extra. You know? <laughs> but the code that I did was like doing infinite super likes, infinite likes with a free account. Because it was returning 200 OK the whole time, the service. So I'm assuming that it worked. You know, I wouldn't, 200 is like OK, except or it's OK, basically. That's what it means. And rest, right? But then they said, no, no, no. You know, like if you get a 200, it doesn't mean that it was actually successful. Now that, I don't understand. I mean, what? What, what do you think? You know, if you get a 200 OK, what do you think in your head? The operation was successful or not? Or, Raise your hands if you think, if, you get a, if you work, you're a developer, you're implementing something, you get a 200 OK. What do you think? Is, was that OK? Was that a 200 successful operation? Raise your hands. OK. And the rest of you, uh, do you think that it isn't OK, you need further investigation to actually confirm the operation was OK or not? Raise your hands. OK, interesting. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. You're more experienced than me. <laughs> the other, uh, you know, the rest that said, uh, yeah. OK. Um, so I was like, OK, fine, fine. I'll stop everything, uh, you know. But I think this is really cool. Can I help? You know, because they have like this bug bounty program. So I was like, you know, can I help you? Can I join this bug bounty uh, program so that I can contribute to your uh, security work? I want to do it for free because, you know, this is fun for me, you know. Uh, so what do you think? Is it okay? Uh, but then they never, they didn't reply. <laughs> they didn't reply at, at all. Anyway. It was like silent treatment, you know, top level. So, so that was pretty bad. They, they, they don't want my help and everything. So, but okay, fine. It's, you know, whatever. Uh, so then, but then, uh, you know, f my friends told me that, because I open sourced the code that I wrote, so I just put it up on GitHub. Uh, but then my friends, uh, some of the, you know, some tech people back in Oslo, they told me that you should, you know, you should probably just lock the code because maybe Tinder is not happy about this and like that. So unfortunately, I took down the code. It's a private repository. Uh, too bad, too bad. But uh, what can we do? I mean, it's you know, we have to respect, uh, <laughs> we have to respect the the people who make the services that we use. It's their service, right? It's their business. We are just consumers. Uh, so the code is uh, in a private repo, and um, you know I you know I don't use the code. I have I stopped the moment that t Tinder said stop, so I stopped at that time. Uh, the OAuth link that I showed you earlier doesn't work anymore. It was working fine when I used it, and I think I believe it was working for a very long time. I believe it was working for years actually, because I saw a lot of people discussing this in GitHub, on GitHub, and they're like, you know, here's the URL, and it was the same URL for being used for years. So something happened, definitely. Something happened uh, at uh, Facebook and Tinder. Uh, but uh, it's a mystery that we, we have yet to figure out. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to investigate this. <laughs> I don't want I, I to get into trouble here, you know? Enough trouble for me uh, so far, so. <laughs> All right, so, um, so how to kind of conclude this experience, right? Um, it was really fun while it lasted, you know. Um, it's very, very important to talk to the, you know, to the third party in question before you do any white hat hacking. Uh, otherwise, it's not white hat. Uh, so, and of course, you know, ethical hacking is, is you know, is really, really fun. Uh, and I think that we can learn a lot uh, if we do this. Uh, I believe that um, you know we can uh, definitely improve the security around the world. But you know, of course, uh, a lot of people say that security is really an illusion, right? Uh, you can bypass pretty much uh, anything. But having sec some security is better than no security at all. So it's it's very very important to do that. So. Yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this little talk here uh, about my experiences. I hope that uh, you know uh, you would be inspired to do some white hat hacking. Um, and uh, uh, of course, I'm open for any questions that you that you if you have any questions, I'm very open for that. Uh, 
you know, feel free to ask me. Uh, and of course, uh, please follow me on Twitter and uh, check out my site here that you see. Uh, this is my technical blog. I blog a lot of, you know, a lot about different different developer stuff. It's very technical, all from you know .NET to JavaScript stuff to Azure, you know. And uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this talk. If there are any questions, let's you know we can take them now. We have some time still. So any questions? Okay. And don't Thanks. be. Thanks, Hira. Yes. Any question? There. We have a question. Yes. Over there. Don't be shy, by the way. Yeah. Thank you, Srira, for that uh, very uh, funny talk. And thank you for, for being ethical enough with your hacking to first do a disclosure with the, with the vendor and then going public, because that's just the right way to do it, uh, Even, especially if you're talking about white hat hacking. Uh, talk, talk about the security problems with the vendor uh, first, so they have a, a chance to fix it before you're going public. Yeah. So um, to, to answer your question earlier, um, I, I raised my hand because I just had the same uh, problem as you, working with an API, getting 200 OKs, uh, and not having the actual uh, thing happen. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not smarter than you. I just had the same problem with another mm. API. Um, my, my question would be, have you ever found out what for the uh, Tinder offers this API? What, what, what's the actual use? I, I've not r read the terms of use, so uh, can, you, can you shine a line light on that? What so can you use it for? Yeah, so what can we use the, app for, uh, the API for, yes? Uh, so you can use all the functionality that you can use with the official Tinder app. So, for example, you can get really creative and like create a bot, for example. You know, if you are just uh, at home, let's say you get a match, you can also do chatting, for example, uh, through the API. So basically, all the features that you get with the app, you get it from the API because the app uses the API, right? Uh, so yeah, so we can do pretty much everything you want to do without having the app, but. Again, this is not uh, something that, uh, that is recommended here, right? Uh, we have to respect Tinder and uh, use their app and you know, all that uh, stuff. I hope that, of course, that Tinder will, you know, will close their API. That would be, wouldn't that be a, you know, a logical thing to do? Why would you have a fully open API if you don't want people to use it uh, in their applications? So I hope that they do that, that they close the API. Yeah, definitely. Any other questions? Feel free to ask if you have any. All right, uh, if you want, I'm still here around in the conference. Uh, I'm going to stay here for uh, another three hours before I have to take the flight back to Oslo. Uh, so please feel free to come over and uh, talk to me and ask me you know, questions about this or about anything else that you're wondering about. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Sira.